What's going on guys, John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, we're going to look at progress bars for Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at progress bars. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Monday morning, Kivi Monday, and I uh, hope you guys had a great weekend. In this video, we're going to look at progress bars. So I've got this button, we can click it every time we do, the progress bar kind of updates. We've got a label that kind of updates accordingly. We could start over, go back to 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%. And we can set this to anything we want. I've got it at 25% increments. You can do it at anything you want. I've got it from one to zero, basically from zero to 100. And you can also change that to anything you want. So we'll look at all that in this video. So I've got two files here, progress.kv and progress.py. It's our basic KV starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And you can find a link to the code for this video in the comment section below, as always, and also a link to the playlist with almost 40 other Kivi videos at the moment and growing every week. So check that out. So, okay, basic Kivi starter code. We've got our builder here set to progress.kv, pointing to our Kivi file. And inside here, we've got just a basic box layout. I've got the orientation set to vertical and the size set to root width and height. So it expands out to the size of the entire app. So, okay let's just go ahead and create a progress bar. So to do that, we just come down here inside of our box layout and just call progress bar. And you notice the P and the B are capitalized. And I'm going to give this an ID and I'm going to call this uh, my underscore progress underscore bar, call it anything you want, but it's progress bar and it's mine. So that's what I'm going to call it. Now we need to set the min and the max. So I'm going to set the min to zero and the max to one. Now this could be anything. You could be from zero to a hundred, you could be from 12 to 42, whatever you want, min and max, but zero to one, we can represent that as from zero to 100% or whatever using decimals. That's probably what I'm gonna do. Uh, so that will work. So, okay, now if we wanna just position this, we can position it as we always do. Give this a position hint, and uh, let's just give this an X of like 0.1, and we can give this a size hint. I'm gonna give this a size hint X of like 0.8, so it doesn't stretch the entire width of our app. There's a little space around it, so we can see it easier. So, okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. And to run this, we could just run python progress.py. And when we do, we see this bar, and we can see there's not really anything in there. So right off the bat, we can give this a value sort of by default. So if I come up here, and let's go set default, value. And this is just value. And we can set this to anything we want. So I'm going to set this to 0.25. Now we've put this between zero and one. So it needs to be within zero and one. I could have changed this from zero to 100, at which point I would have put it this at 25. But I put it at zero and one. So we'll do sort of decimals. Now if we save this and run it, you see we got this exact same thing, except for now, our progress bar has 25% progress happening, right? So all right, pretty easy. Now, how do we actually update this thing? So if something happens on the back end and we need this to update, if you've got a timer going and every five seconds you want it to go, or if you're uploading something and as it uploads, you want it to move, or you just want to click a button and have it change, how do you do that? Well, that's what we're going to do in this video. We're just going to click a button because there are a thousand ways you could need to want a progress bar to update. And it doesn't matter what that way is, it's always gonna update in the same way. So I'll just do the easiest way to show you in this video so it makes sense easier. So let's head down here and let's just create a quick button. And I'm gonna call this button. And let's give this some text that says, press me, <laughs> right? And then on press, let's just call a function in root and let's just call, let's just call it press it, right? So we wanna create this function now. And anytime this function runs, we're just going to update our progress bar. So let's head over here and in our my layout class or our main class, I'm just going to define press it and I'm going to pass in self like we usually do. So now what do we want to happen when the button is pressed? Well, we want, let's say the progress bar to update 25%. So it'll go from 25 to 50 to 75 to hundred, right? So first we need to get the current value. So I'm going to set the current equal to self, that IDS dot, 
and we can call whatever we called our progress bar. So we called this my progress bar, and then we can get the dot value, right? So that will assign that, this whole thing, into this variable. So now we can just update it if we want. So let's go self dot IDS dot my progress bar dot value. And let's set that to whatever current is. But before we do that, we need to increment current. So let's go plus equals 0.25. Right? Okay, so that'll work for now. So let's uh, comment this, grab the current progress bar value. Let's go increment value by 0.25. And then let's go update the progress bar. It's good to comment these things. So okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. See how this looks. So okay, by default, we have it set to 25. Here's our button. If we click it, boom, it increases to 50. Boom, it increases to 75. Boom, it increases to 100. After that, it's sort of done. We can keep pressing it and nothing happens. So, well, that's cool. But when it gets to here, maybe we want it to start over. So let's do that real quick. That's sort of super easy. We just come back over to our Python file. And inside of here, let's just create a quick if statement. So let's go uh, if statement to start over after 100, let's say. So let's go if current equals one. Remember when it gets to the end, it's at one because our min is zero, our max is one. So if it gets to the end, current will be one. So if it is, let's just reset current to zero, right? And then everything else can just continue as normal. We'll increment it by 25, paste it out to the screen, it should be good to go. So let's save this and run it, make sure that worked. So we start out at 25, boom, 50, 75, 100, boom, back to 25, 50, 75, 100. And maybe we don't want this to start at 25. And so if that's the case, we could just head back over here to our value and we could set that to zero or we could, you know, just comment it out. So let me just do that. So let me just do that instead. So I'll okay, save this and run it, see if that worked. And so now our bar has nothing to begin with and boom, 25, 50, 75, 100, 25, 50, 75, 100, 25, 50, 75, 100. Okay, so that works. So maybe we want a label to show, I mean, we know this is 25%, but maybe a normal person wouldn't. Maybe we want to show that this is 25, this is 50, this is 75, and this is 100. How could we do that? Well, we just create a quick label and I want this above the progress bar. So I'll put it right there. And let's give this an ID of, my label, I guess, whatever. And then let's set the text of this equal to 0% progress, right? So when it starts, it'll be 0%. So if we save this and run it, just to make sure that got there correctly, we see, okay, it's a 0% progress and we could put it below it if you wanted to, whatever. But uh, as we click this, it doesn't update. So we know how to update labels and their IDs on the back end, we've done that lots of times in the playlist. So we just copy this ID, head back over here. And anytime this thing updates, let's also update the label. So let's go self dot IDS dot my label dot text. And we wanna set that equal to, let's create an F string. And inside of here, we wanna put whatever the current value is, right? So this will change from 25.25 to 0 0.50 to point whatever. And here we could go progress. We save this and run it. Yeah, this might work okay. 0% progress, 0.25 progress, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1. Uh, I wanna change this to 100% instead. I think that'll look a little better. So instead of here, let's go current. And we could just sort of times this by 100, slap a percentage sign behind it, and that should do the trick there. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so 0%, now it says 25%, 50%, and notice it says 0, 0.0, it's an actual float, it's a decimal number. No, that's fine, or we could change that if we wanted to. You know, we could wrap this whole thing in an integer function if we wanted to. And let's put this, let's wrap this whole thing. So we wanna convert the entire 0 0.25 times 100 then convert it to an integer. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. That should do the trick there. 
So we've got 0% progress, 25%, 50%. Notice it's right here, 50%. Boom, 75% right here, 75% progress bar, and 100%. Back down to 25%. Okay, right. and it's just that easy. So those are progress bars, really easy. And like I said, this is probably the easiest sort of explanation of using a progress bar just by clicking a button. Chances are you're not going to have somebody click a button for the progress bar to move. You're going to have something happening in your program that you want to visualize with a progress bar, but you do it in the exact same way. Just whatever happens, you then update your value of your progress bar to whatever the thing is. So if it's a timer and every 10 seconds it's going, every 10 seconds you would just output the output of the timer right there, right? If it's a file uploading or something, and you know, same thing. You just, whatever you've got to update, you update it in the same way, just by slapping a dot value to yourself, dot IDs, dot my progress bar, or whatever you've called it, and uh, just that easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Konami.com, and I'll see you in the next video.